Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news bulletin today, Friday, October 5th, 2012. My website's ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Thank you for joining me. And this is the article we left off with, Tunisia extends state of emergency. And this is, they actually extended it all the way to October following an attack on the US embassy that killed four people. So didn't hear much about that, did you? Somali forces arrest 100 Al-Shabaab suspects in uh, kiss mail. So uh, this is kind of a odd story too. I mean, usually you just hear about Al-Shabaab getting blown up or, some, or something like that, right? Or killed, uh, but they're arrested. So it's uh, pretty interesting. So they, they definitely got this place locked down and they got them defeated. So it's here, Kenyan forces took control of the Kismayo that uh, serves Al-Shabaab fighters as a major stronghold and they provided them with a lucrative revenues via control of its Indian Ocean port. This is what I've said many, many times, right? Residents also saw the government forces thoroughly searching hotels, houses, vehicles, and business premises. Somebody commented saying, I heard the Somalia puppet government, once it defeats Al-Shabaab, will give the U.S. military a military base that will be used to attack Iran. Of course, somebody, maybe from Somalia or something, says that um, that we have been suffering from foreign intervention for more than two decades. A lot more than that. No more intervention. We follow a non-alliance policy until it becomes strong nation and economically and politically. Private army formed to fight Somali pirates leaves troubled legacy. It seemed like a simple idea. In the chaos that is Somalia, create a sophisticated, highly trained fighting force that could finally defeat the pirates terrorizing the shipping lanes off the Somalia coast. Basically, what were they doing? They were asking for attacks, right? That's what they were trying to do. Something they would have done a long time ago, but they lost it. So they call them pirates. But the creation of the Puntland Maritime Police Force was anything but simple. It involved dozens of South African mercenaries, the shadowy security firm that employed them, talking about CIA and CIA front companies, millions of dollars in secret payments by the UAE, a former clandestine officer with the Central Intelligence Agency, and Eric Prince, the billionaire formed head of Blackwater, the, uh, another mercenary unit, right? Private contractor. So a lot of money is flown into this, private money, to be able to go in there, like I said, and exploit this nation. I remember it was about, what, about a year and a half ago when they really started to bring the Kenyan forces in, but that was after they brought the CIA in. Once I heard about them bringing in um, ex-CIA, uh, former CIA, uh, uh, contractors, uh, private contractors now, then I knew that they were out there training them and stuff. I knew that they were going down soon. And then they brought in the Kenyan military and then, yeah, they, they're done. So Russia slams U.S. terror drone strikes in Pakistan. So this is a kind of a big deal too. This is Russia kind of sticking its neck out as far as politically what where their uh, alliances are, are going to be. Uh, uh, Pakistan is um, central, somewhat central Asia, so it's kind of getting closer to their doorstep. They put their weight behind Islamabad's position on U.S. assassination drone strikes in Pakistan's tribal regions, describing them as a violation of the Asian country's sovereignty and integrity. Well, unfortunately, as long as Pakistan receives money from the United States, they're going to keep allowing them to drone bomb, no matter how many their people protest it. Uh, Kyrgyzstan police repel protesters seeking ouster of government. I have a set of videos. Go in there and check it out. Kyrgyzstan, another puppet state, and I got blasted in the comments, comment board by a few people saying, what, what, what? Well, it's true. They have a puppet government. So they said here that they fired tear gas on Wednesday to stop protesters from storming the government headquarters in what their leader called a coup bid after the new premier rejected demands to nationalize the gold mining venture with the Canadian company. The volatile Central Asian state has seen several attacks on the government since Kyrgyzstan's independence, quote, independence, right, from the Soviet Union in 1991. The bloodiest parts were in 2005 and in 2010 that toppled two presidents when they both fled abroad. That's the key word, fled abroad. Wednesday's rally was a direct call to overthrow the government of Kyrgyzstan with the most violent capital since uh, 2010 that ousted President uh, Bakiev. So we were just... We were just talking about this as far as Mali goes. They had a Canadian uh, Canadian uh, company in there, mining or something like that, or oil. Uh, just like Somalia, you have a Canadian uh, company uh, getting their oil. The clashes erupted two days after the prime minister traveled to uh, this gold mine operated by a, a nice uh, local company, right? Canada's Santera Gold Incorporated and gave assurances this venture would not be nationalized. So we're talking about instability, right? We're just talking about in Tunisia, they have a state of emergency. Then Ireland, 
They're uh, stocking up on ammunition and plan to buy over 1 million rounds. It says, though a largely unarmed force, Guard Eye need the ammunition for training and for use by detectives and specialties units, like the Emergency Response Unit and Regional Support Unit. And someone wrote in the comment board, looks like they expect the peasants to revolt soon. Actually, if the punters had any balls, it should have happened years ago. Then I saw this article, and this is why I included the Ireland news from October 4th, 2012. Homes evacuated after device found in North Belfast House. 30 houses have been evacuated after police discovered a suspicious object during a house search. So, yeah, you know, this, this is them just going through a uh, probable cause to be able to go in somebody's house, and then, oh, we got a, something suspicious, possibly a bomb, and it's like a Pepsi can or something like that, and they get to go and search everybody else's houses. In the United States, they're getting ready, too, to amend the Homeland Security Act. They actually did it of 2002 to require the Administrator of Federal, uh, basically FEMA, to provide guidance and coordination for mass fatality planning and for other purposes. Mass Fatality Planning Religious Considerations Act, Emergency Preparedness, uh, talking about basically funeral homes, cemeteries, mortuaries could be overwhelmed should mass fatalities arise from a natural disaster, a false flag attack uh, of terrorism, or other man-made disasters, i.e. Um, uh, chemtrails and harp, see? Uh, different religions have different customs surrounding death. For example, Jewish and Muslim regions call for burial of the deceased not later than 48 hours after death. <laughs> That's kind of interesting because uh, I never knew that. I actually requested that recently to my to my family to uh, put me in a wooden box and none of that fancy synthetic whatever crap, a regular wooden box and put me in the ground within 48 hours. I guess that's kind of a natural thing, you know? It's very artificial to keep the body out, out of the, off the ground and, and stuff like that, pumped full of chemicals for days on end, you know? Just, someone dies, get everybody get there if you can't make it, you know, skip the wakes, just get to the funeral and let it be done, right? Yeah, well, unfortunately, they can't make, they can't squeeze one more dime out of you uh, after you die, right? They want to squeeze as much out of you, right? From the moment you're born, you're 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 in this world, in this reality, this physical world. You got a you got a birth certificate, a certificate to be birthed, uh, a certificate to be dead, you know, uh, registration and stuff like that. So, AP exclusive says U.S. embassy car was likely targeted in Mexico attack on CIA officers. You guys remember this? Uh, what I was saying that they were spooks, and, it, and someone bashed me in the comment board again, and it ended up that they were. A senior U.S. official says that there is strong circumstantial evidence that the Mexican federal police who fired on a U.S. embassy vehicle, uh, they called them diplomats, and I called them spooks, so wounding two CIA officers were working for organized crime in a targeted assassination attempt. And you know why, right? Because the agencies, what, they head up the, they manage the drug trade, dude. That's what a Mexican politician uh, just said recently in, a, uh, in an article from, I believe, Al Jazeera. So we have Mexican diplomat says, America pretty much invited the Sonola drug cartel across the border. Remember what I said? That's who they're backing, the Sonola drug cartel and taking out the Zetas and that. Competition, that's what it's about. Leaked emails from the private U.S. security firm uh, Stratford site, Mexican diplomat who says the U.S. government works with the Mexican drug cartels to traffic drugs into the U.S. and has sided with the Sonola cartel in an attempt to limit the violence in Mexico. And uh, I just had an article, but uh, I lost it. <laughs> and uh, it was about Mexican troops being deployed um, outside one of their main cities. I don't know if it was Mexico City. Uh, due to the drug violence, uh, people are basically get you know, they're scared. You know, they have to make these payments to these cartels and stuff like that. Otherwise, they, uh, they get killed, them and their families. So they had troops deployed in the city. Uh, Univision finds more weapons linked to Fast and Furious. The ATF's uh, operation allowed over 2,000 guns to walk in the hands of the dangerous Mexican drug cartels. They so Univision News found 57 unreported firearms from Fast and Furious, and the three of these weapons were used in the massacre on uh, January 30th, 2010. So who does gain from the drug trade? Well, the private prison scam is a key component of this as well, says Cryptagon from Al Jazeera. It says that... Um, one ambiguous winner is the Western banking sector down here. Uh, in recent years, a series of Americans, American and British banks, including Wachovia, HSBC, have been caught providing banking services to drug dealers. The head of the UN Office in Drugs Crime told Observer Newspaper that in many instances, the money from the drugs was the only liquid investment capital that the banks could access during the credit squeeze in 08. There were signs, he said, that some banks were rescued that way. And here's a little thing, a typical money laundering scheme. Talking about HSBC and the global drug trade. 
George Carlin from 1996, the death penalty doesn't mean anything unless you use it on people who are afraid to die, like the bankers who launder drug money, the bankers who launder the drug money. Forget the dealers. You want to slow down that drug traffic, you got to start executing a few of these fucking bankers, white middle-class Republican bankers. And the CEO of the America's biggest bank is a profile in Vanity Fair. Says Tom Brady to Jamie Dimon, hang in there. And I thought that was kind of ironic because four Iranian bankers were sentenced to hang. So, an example of justice for the people, Iran sentenced four banksters Monday, this is from August 1st of this year, to hang for the role in Persian state's largest ever fraud scandal. And workers at a multiple Walmart stores on strike for the first time. So this is the first time in Walmart's 50-year history workers at multiple stores are on strike. Remember last time they went out to do that, they got the police state. Weekly U.S. jobless benefit applications rise to 367,000. And the reason for today's unemployment rate surge is part-time jobs for economic reasons surge. So what's the reason for this big jump? It says simple, and those who have read our series on America's transition to a part-time worker society know the answer. It says the number of part-time employees for economic reasons soared by 582,000 to 8,613, the most since October 2011, and the largest one-month jump since February 2009. Remember this article from September 3rd, low-wage jobs replace middle-income work study fine. In other words, jobs that can sustain middle-life lifestyle are disappearing as low-wage jobs take their place. The National Bank of Canada is foreclosing Americans' homes over credit card debt. According to a report, the bank is attempting to foreclose upon hundreds of American families' homes in California over old credit card debt. So like they like to do this in the winter, you know, right when the winter's coming on. China to challenge U.S. dollar reserve currency status. It says that gold inched up on Thursday, continuing its fourth day of gains. Down here, China is actively taking steps to phase out the U.S. dollar, which will decrease volatility in the oil and commodity prices and deride the privilege the USA commands as the issuer of reserve currency as a center of post-war international financial architecture. So they're talking about the petrodollar. Which is why I think they're trying to uh, get more sanctions on Iran that imports oil to um, to uh, all around the world, including Europe, like Libya, right? Because it's good for the petrodollar. They want to keep it up. And uh, Lloyd's, TSB, and Halifax bank customers un unable to reach cash. So a bank run, right? They said it's a system error. Similar to the online banking uh, websites that were hit with cyber attacks, this was when September 28th, customers were denied access to their online accounts. But this is what I've been talking about, right? It says, mega banks plan to steal your money and blame fake Muslim cyber attack. Senator and self-proclaimed Zionist Joseph Lieberman declared that it was Iran who cyber attacked Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase in 2011. He states that the financial attack was spurned by the state-sponsored anti-Muslim film circulating in the Middle East thanks to CIA operatives Al-Qaeda. The U.S. government is planning the propaganda seed that according to highly classified documents, U.S. megabanks are a valid target of Iranian cyber army. But hey, from October 4th, cyber attacks on banks are the price of banking in the digital area. And then I saw this, Britain in talks on the cybersecurity hotline with China and Russia. And really what they want is a key, an internet key. So so only authorized slaves can go on the internet to get information. Uh, fiscal cliff to cost typical middle class family $2,000 every year, says a report. A typical middle middle income family making forty to 64000 could see their taxes go up by $2,000 next year if lawmakers fail to renew a lengthy roster of tax cuts. They're calling it tax Mageddon. Of course, it, well, it's all fear mongering, right? F will hit 88% prompting a new recession. They so uh, analysts are saying investors are opting for gold ahead of the U.S. fiscal cliff. Check out my videos from yesterday. I covered that. And then and uh, Chinese netizens are saying China is spending as much on calming civil unrest as the U.S. on war. As the gap between the poor and the wealthy seem to grow, riots will be occurring more frequently. We have California cities are in a fiscal trouble conga line. It came Stockton, Mammoth Lake, San Bernardino, which California city will go bankrupt next said there's a lot of them lined up in the conga line. One of them is at water. They may even lay off a quarter of their town's 90-person workforce. Imagine that before the holidays. 2,400 U.S. millionaires received jobless checks in 2009. So I've mentioned this before. I'm going to stick by the millionaires here, dude. If they pay into it, they got it flipping right to, uh, to get it returned, right? So you're going to have politicians playing this class warfare BS, calling it out-of-control spending. Commenter says, just goes to show that the rich lose their jobs, too. 
And then they want to take away their Social Security after they pay into it because they live longer. Thank you.